Okay, all right. So welcome everyone. I'm gonna start by just anchoring us in the land that we're gathered on here right now for land acknowledgement. So the Centre d'Art et de Diffusion Clark acknowledges that we are located in Tiotiake, Montreal, the unceded indigenous territory of the Kanyin Kiakeha Nation. We are grateful to be able to carry out our activities on this land and to grow together in community through initiatives such as our Indigenous Residency Program in partnership with the Indigenous Curatorial Collective, ICCA. We thank you, we thank our Indigenous partners and look forward to continuing to work together to create a more connected future here in COTIK Montreal. Um, and welcome Michael and welcome everyone. Um, so I will start by introducing you. Uh, Michael Eddy is an artist and writer based in Montreal. His work at once conceptual and handmade, explores aspects of representation and history in art and popular culture through various mediums, including printmaking, drawing, sculpture, video, and text. Michael holds a Meisterschüler from Städtschule Frankfurt and a BFA interdisciplinary from Nova Scotia College of Art and Design. So welcome. And I think we're, as we discussed, we're gonna go into our Q&A. So can you begin by sharing a bit about your practice and about M for Leviathan, the exhibition installed here at Clark? Okay, well, um, this is sort of the first time uh, for me to show sculpture as just alone, or I mean, installation has been a, a big part of how I'm putting exhibitions together and there's always something sculpture about it, but sculptural about it, but uh, like they're very discrete objects uh, of a certain size, I guess. Um, and when I first thought about the, this project, uh, I looked back today at the, the um, proposal and it's kind of like this. <laughs> All right. It didn't nice. change that much, <laughs> um, but the context has changed quite a lot. Okay. Um, one of the original starting points, it, it's kind of like, um, on the one hand, doing stuff in the studio and seeing where it goes. Uh, on the other hand, there's kind of the, there's changes going on. For example, in one of the topics of the show is, um, artificial intelligence and since that proposal which was probably a year and a half or two years ago right. the context completely changed and now it's not just some funny thing that can alter how we make images but it's a kind of society changing um, phenomenon and um, and I guess if I'm looking at previous projects, uh, there's usually an, an amount or a, an element of looking around at uh, and responding to things. Mm -hmm. um, it can be a little bit newsy in that way. Uh, and also thinking a lot about uh, totality and of a of an image or a number of images that represent um, large social systems. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess also I would maybe last say lastly say about like why there's so much symbolism or like um, icon icons uh, references to pop culture and media is because those are kind of like the language of the totality of, uh, mm. of um, the yeah, representations of, of the society, uh, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, I think what I'm hearing is you take in a lot of information and then in your work there is maybe an effort or an emphasis on objectivity to put forth some sort of survey um, as to what's happening in culture and what's happening in society? I don't know if it's objective and like 
maybe that's something uh, that this topic actually allows you to get away from uh, and become very subjective because the way something like AI uh, promises to cha change image making or the way that I've received it is as uh, like this the return it, like I could return to just being spontaneous in some ways and not not uh, representing uh, large amounts of data or um, oh, being okay. documentary yeah, yeah, yeah. even uh, but um, but it's still yeah I guess it has an objective quality still because uh, I, I don't know there's like you said, you're drawing on a larger social conversation and the conversation you see happening and maybe approaching that somewhat analytically, but this exhibition is still like a, a subjective response to that in some way. Well, there's a few principles that I think, like, for example, delegation, um, where you give your choices up to, uh, uh, th that, that's an aspect of, artificial intelligence that, uh, for example, in the video, uh, I approached the, my collaborator with the idea that he was my artificial intelligence uh, oh, assistant. Okay, I, okay, okay. I mean, that's, that was the starting point. I didn't treat him like uh, <laughs> a slave or something, um, the way we treat computers, but, uh, but um, that started the conversation between us and then uh, also, in that video, um, it's a copy of a of a animation, a Disney animation, okay. in the sense uh, that how artificial intelligence copies things and mm. and like removes it from a clear copy and just makes it in the you could you can make a copy of this but in the style of that, and that principle also kind of uh, allows, uh, well, it's, in a way, it's kind of threatening to uh, uh, my studio practice, but, um, but it also allows a certain level of subjectivity. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. When you say threatening, I'm wondering if you're talking about, I know a lot of artists have been concerned about the potential for AI to repurpose their work? Do you mean threatening to your studio practice in that sense? There's that, but there's also like, uh, what's the meaning of, of uh, making kind of surrealist imagery, which I was kind of drawn to uh, in, in my drawings, kind of like, um, and well, it's just, I mean, I don't want to make it sound, uh, it's, it would be kind of boring to say that like uh, photography changed what painters did. Mm -hmm. In that same way, uh, artificial intelligence, neural network images, images are changing what artists do, uh, right? But it, you could kind of make a comparison like that. Yeah, I hear that. Like it opens up new windows of possibility for how you create, and this new possibilities of imagery as well. And or I'm sure it will. Well, it, it like the expertise involved is, is it change it de skills in some ways. Yeah, and it adds another really set sense. of skills. So yeah. like uh, to be able to write this linguistic formula correctly, and then you end up with something that a human hand couldn't do, but it looks, it looks like, it can even look like it has a sense of humor mm -hmm. and things like that. Like You're talking about chat GPT. Et, et yeah. cetera, like all of those, mm -hmm. uh, there's so many of them now. And mm -hmm. when I first started this project or this kind of, this body of work, it was, um, you know, it took 10 minutes to come, to get an image from uh, when you put your prompt in and now it's like two seconds, literally. So okay. that, that is threatening in, in some ways, um, but only if you're like, maybe more for illustrators and um, 
But I wanted to make a, a, a show that didn't use the technology very, almost at all. Mm -hmm. The show feels very analog still, despite the subject matter that you're exploring. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's actually not even apparent which, uh, that, that this was what on my mind for the, mm -hmm. um, because it's also about like uh, how it, c uh, visions of how it could be used and not just like the types of images it makes. Mm -hmm. So um, there's like uh, in a lot of these, there's kind of personifications of, of kind of abstract things like the city as a as a figure as like a sick figure. Mm -hmm. of, is it's a I I ask people I try to ask people what do you see and and you say oh it's kind of like a face or a, mm, oh yeah okay yeah it's an that's Montreal Island but uh, it's it's so it's like a, it's the the shape of Montreal if you look at the map. Like in a certain way, it could look like a like a hooded figure with Laval. It's kind of like the hood, and um, but it's it's like it's sick. It's red. It's an angry, mm -hmm. uh, feverish hacker. Uh, so like the the all of that like objectivity is actually um, is being filtered through this kind of crazy mind. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess, or like a very subjective mind, or some being affected by the circumstances and not yeah. clean and rational. But uh, so, the, like, the way I've thought about the installation is kind of like this: is the the workspace? I don't know if I should just like. <laughs> Abs yeah, absolutely. I'll jump in with questions. Yeah, I'll jump in with questions as necessary. So this is kind of like a workspace, uh, an office space, and. Um, and somebody, the video, well, the video being the, the copy of uh, this Disney cartoon, which was about New York. Mm. And uh, we tried to copy it, but overlay uh, Montreal onto it. Mm. So it's got a lot of Montreal symbolism and also updated or, uh, uh, you know, in the original, there's a there's four characters. There's one of them. I won't go through all of it, but one of them is a little girl uh, who uh, doesn't get to spend time with her parents, but keeps g getting shuttled from one teacher to the next. She's she's like they're trying to make her the best student, and uh, in this one, she's taking online courses mm -hmm. one after the other, and she just misses her parents, and then. Um, so there's that kind of logic happening there of of uh, of copying and um, and orchestration also like the the another theme is the the city as orchestrated and because one of the motivations was like Clark being I guess it's not really directly but between my house and Clark, you have this kind of like, my house is north of, it's in Park Extension. And okay. these neighborhoods are kind of co co connected on this tech, uh, tech axis. So you have like the university, the new campus of the University of Montreal in my neighborhood, which is, um, which is kind of centered on these kind of advanced technologies and then you have here Clark, which is the video game uh, right behind Ubisoft's armpit. So um, that that kind of motivated the the idea, some of the ideas, and um, just thinking of what a AI will do to cities and how it will be used to do everything from make the traffic lights react to the data or you know uh, security apparatuses to use it for how to police the city so like there's this context which is maybe not apparent but that's where my interest came from mm -hmm. and this figure 
is kind of like a work in progress of a representation of justice. So within that kind of city, uh, the, the justice, something like justice, it could be some, some other figure, but will still need a body for, for us to be able to identify with it. Otherwise, it would be like, why did I get this traffic ticket? Oh, because uh, a camera saw you somewhere um, and identified facial, facially recognized you somewhere, or, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we need some, like, who's actually deciding? Well, let's have, uh, let's, like, embody it in a Ninja Turtle. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, there's some kind of, like, there's, there's some echoes already of, of elements of statuary, like green, <laughs> greenness, or these uh, headbands, that instead of having the holes like the Ninja Turtles are, are supposed to blindfold you. Um, but she's not finished, and there's elements uh, inside, kind of details uh, that, that are giving hints about uh, uh, what what is driving this figure mm -hmm. but this wall is is the menu of, of body parts basically to choose from uh, for to fill out that body further of the, it's like a menu of options basically each thing can be uh, taken separately or you can kind of imagine it in in relation to the whole thing mm -hmm. I have a question about the blindfold because I'm noticing that, like you said, there aren't holes cut out for the eyes. And is, is that a commentary on kind of the quality of, the, of how you see where justice is headed or a commentary on the level of objectivity? Well, the, justice is supposed to be blind. That's mm -hmm. what the, and so the, like the, the classic figure of justice with the the scales and the sword uh, is supposed to be blind. This one, I wanted to add something handmade, but referring to uh, fractals. So it, it, they have like these swirls, which in um, math, uh, it, fractals are supposed to be able to represent natural forms, like you could put a calculate, but this is like mathematical developments from 50 years ago or something. It's not that new, but, um, I, but yeah, I just, there's, there is a bit of um, subjectivity there in that choice, but I don't really know what direction, I'm not, I'm not trying to uh, predict uh, necessarily what's happening, but I, I'm making kind of a parody on the idea that the city's going to get more fun and, and uh, playful uh, with when we don't have to kind of make our own decisions and mm. we give it to these representations of, of abstract forces. And one, like this other video, which is um, behind you, right. is a, a video of Japanese soldiers that I took a, a, a while ago in Super 8. Um, who are riding bicycles to work, but in this, in my imagination or of what this could be, it's just, that's their job now, is just riding bicycles uh, because the, the kind of defensive um, role is, is, take, is like automatic. It's been delegated. It's, it's been delegated, and so they're just, uh, riding around and the, the soundtrack is kind of like um, it's uh, sounds kind of like free jazz but it's just like remixed samples of Kenny G uh, mm. he's a jazz popular, musician, yeah. popular jazz musician <laughs> or not jazz but um, so like that idea that this playful uh, quality is like quite prevalent in the video too of um, uh, yeah, so like uh, an orchestration uh, 
it's not a dark orchestration in the video. It's not, it's, there are some moments where the, the workers are getting smashed, but uh, mostly it's people realizing their dreams or people are, are kind of uh, animated figures. Mm. That makes me wonder if the conversation that you're having here, if it's, because you're saying in the video it's not dark, so if this is not kind of a darkly comedic take on what, um, what you see happening, uh, are, you, are you suggesting kind of a, that a literal playfulness could abound, or is this kind of a dark comedic take? On I'd say that, yeah. It's, the second, it's, yeah. It's yeah, more ironic. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to, to check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's ironic, and I wouldn't even necessarily, one of your questions I saw was about like, uh, or is, is there a, uh, is the human, is, some people have also men mentioned like, uh, it, like the human side winning or like, uh, I don't know, escaping that, the logic of, of total control uh, by making things by hand. It is, that's also comedic, I would say. I don't know, I don't know if there's a lot of hope, but um, there's fun. If there's no hope, there's still fun. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> I think I'll find that exact question because I feel like we could unpack that a little bit more. Yeah, I wrote, there's a contrast embedded throughout your work as you explore complex and at times barely tangible notions, such as AI and systems for collecting data, and the way that we navigate these as humans. Yes, simple, poetic, rugged clay forms, yielding a grounding effect to the work. Yeah, so do you want to unpack the contrast a little bit more between how these systems, they're really complex, um, uh, mathematic, scientific, and, and also kind of evolving beyond like human understanding. And yeah, yeah, is I guess, um, I guess maybe you already answered that the, the contrast is a result of your desire for play within this, and that's why you've chosen um, to explore these, yeah, explore this question in, in kind of these playful, somewhat even juvenile, like they really reference childhood for me, and the kind of um, like dreams and conversations children have around um, adult life and adult world. <laughs> I think the, the um, the grounded quality can also still be a bit, um, a, a little ironic because, well, I, I don't think that that is going to, uh, to be a good weapon against uh, takeover. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, it also the, the, the sinisterness of it has, that's part of that change in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. That when I, I started, um, it seemed like AI images w were just gonna be kind of like this goofy friend who, who you say like, make me a, a cat ninja and then, okay. And then it makes you your, your image for you and it just says dumb things uh, when you ask it to. And, uh, but, but the, yeah, there's the the there's a, the whole. I think maybe that's getting us ready for. Uh, it's getting us familiar with it first, before. Mm, that makes sense. It's so unthreatening, in that way. But it's obviously taken on many other uses since. And this feels like a good time to ask what a leviathan is. Mm. The, the title of the yeah. exhibition. Well, the the it's also a kind of trans or a substitution in the way that um, the title is M for Leviathan so the M it could be a number of things it I kind of left that open but it could be Manhattan which is kind of referred to in the video and other of the sculptures uh, as as capital of the 20th century and now like what if Montreal is the capital of the 21st century? Kind of that, th that basic uh, what if scenario. Mm. So M for Montreal too. 
uh, it could be my initial as the author and, and uh, expecting there to be meaning in within uh, this, all of this discussion of copying and delegation, like, um, but the metropolis in general, the M could be that. Yeah. But Leviathan is, I'm referring in this sculpture behind you, um, and in a lot of the, the, the works about the city or like the personification of a, of a totality, uh, um, Leviathan is a book by Thomas Hobbes who wrote about uh, the, the sovereign, the, the head of state or the king as being the one who can make all the decisions for their people and has the ability to take life, for example, and decide on how to use the law. And, um, and so the I, uh, touching on what we've already talked about, like the, the um, it is, it's the, the power, I guess, mm -hmm. the power of, of the, the state. Mm -hmm. I think when you search it too, Levioth Le Leviathan is almost interchangeable with monster. Yes, yeah, A yeah, lot exactly. of um, references to monsters come up when you search yeah. Leviathan. The, yeah. the Leviathan, in, I don't know exactly how Thomas Hobbes, writing in the 17th century, why he came to that word, but the, uh, the original, his original tri uh, manuscript had the, the image of this king, but with a sword and a scepter and a crown, which I took those away from this figure. Um, because he's kind of like wireless. He's kind of, you don't need those, Im those weapons necessarily. He doesn't need human symbols. Yeah, yeah. he's just, uh, 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 just formed of all this activity, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yeah, makes, makes all the decisions and, and orchestrates society, I suppose. Mm. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, because there is this mystical, ambiguous feeling to the title. And then in searching Leviathan, it began to come together. But hearing you unpack it, um, it's always nice when yeah, titles have this, ex this, this kind of hidden information that helps to contextualize the exhibition. It's so. also kind of a, a cinematic uh, reference, or even like to the actually it might, might have been a, a novel, but M for Murder was a mm. Hitchcock movie. And um, so it has nothing to do with <laughs> this, this show, <laughs> but uh, except there are some other kind of cinema, cinematic references, um, partly because of that idea of animating and orchestrating society uh, specifically in a with the soundtrack, um, but there's also Jimmy Stewart there from Rear Window, uh, who's a Hitchcock guy. Mm. Well, and that's one of the fun things about artistic practice is it isn't a scientific method. There will be references in exhibitions that are personal that don't always necessarily lend in a direct way to the, the thematics that you're exploring because it's your world and you get to express it how you want. But that also brought me to another question, which is storytelling in your work. I'm curious how storytelling and mythology, if those are tool you, tools you use in your practice at large, because I really feel that woven throughout this exhibition. I, um, I guess like the, fa the reason why an installation uh, I, I'm drawn to kind of formulating a room, an exhibition as an installation is because of that, a, the ability to make a narrative around through the space and mm -hmm. give either a figure to the spirit of, the, of it. Um, and I'm, I'm also 
writing stories, and I think it comes from that too. But um, the like, if you come as a visitor to an exhibition, you don't need to know uh, all of these th these yeah, kind the of backstory. references, hopefully, yeah. and. Uh, but I guess you can lay out the fragments in a way that could maybe lead someone to. But I I don't I don't have the the final. There's not a final meaning I think that would uh, that I would determine, and uh, that's I think maybe maybe with writing it's 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 still that way. But mm -hmm. in in installation, because it's spatial, you don't the there's not it's it's quite nonlinear. So mm -hmm. um, storytelling has this other this other dynamic to it. Right. I think I hear what you're saying. Where if like storytelling is quite literal in writing, it's it's there. Whereas in an installation. Um, these stories and narratives inform the work that you create. However, the reads that a viewer could take away from the exhibition are multiple and becoming and proliferating. And um, yeah, it's not, it's not finite. So this aspect of storytelling more so informs the work um, as you create it, um, and less so is informing the viewer. Mm -hmm. It's more the viewer is um, taking away sensations mm -hmm. as opposed to a narrative specifically. Um, and I think I'll check to see, yeah, one other thing I wanted to ask about just was the influence of architecture, infrastructure, yeah, architecture and infrastructure on your practice. I think that's the grounding element rather than um, the quite like fantastical uh, handmade studio element. The grounding thing is that we're living in this world and um, it's made of concrete and water mains and or electric conduits and things like that. Uh, I there's a kind of virtual quality to this installation. What I was trying to go for, uh, like the the seats are made of kind of water or right. like things rushing through pipes. The table is not a functional table. It's it's just a matrix of it uh, that would represent a table, yeah. and um, so th that's not the real world out there. And then this is a kind of a, a, some sort of abstract menu, but everything is has some element of of repurposed or. Uh, Per, uh, utilitarian quality to it, I mm. guess that. Um. It's like you're using the working human language for navigating to express this other fantastical, um, fictional narrative that then has truth embedded in it. Yeah. So it's like a truth to non-truth to truth to non-truth. And maybe in that way, uh, speculative, like you, mm -hmm. this, this could all happen, or it it could it could go a different way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just one possible. I mean, yeah, it's one possible vision, but it's it's very. Uh, and in that way, it's it it's virtual. It it's not yet made. It's under construction. Mm. Kind of. Yes, under construction, makes sense. And I guess this brings me to my last question before we ask everyone else um, if you have any questions, which is coming back to that notion of play uh, and inserting play in this discussion around artificial intelligence and the direction um, that maybe technology is headed in. Would you say that that is an attempt to reconnect with or to negotiate the role of the human being and or what it means to be human in this moment for you? I 
or maybe not. <laughs> well, the yeah, I don't. It's maybe less about what it means to be human and more what it means to do specific activities. Uh, I don't. Okay, okay. I'm not of the mind that it's going to uh, that artificial intelligence is 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 going to create new beings that we're going to respect as... Right, yeah, that's a stretch, yeah. Some people want to make, uh, like, the AI Bill of Rights and, and stuff. Uh, it's, it, it's a little bit too... Like far-fetched. It's, well, it's mostly, like, the tech people who want that mm -hmm. and it basically want to pat themselves on the back for kind of being gods. And so I think there's a lot of interest in that. And I would say... Probably, I, I wouldn't be the first to look at it uh, with some suspicion. That, um, but I, I hope that I'm not proposing like a solution. There's no, mm -hmm. there's not like a, if we do this, then we're going to escape that mm -hmm. type of statement being made here deliberately. Right, I hear what you're saying where this is... This work has been created as a, it's like an aesthetic response to a situation without proposing a sort of opinion or conclusion to be drawn. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, unless you have anything to add, I would invite anyone to ask questions, if any of you have questions.